Here is how I created this animation. This is not a tutorial, just a quick breakdown of my process of creating this animation. Although it was super fun to create this animation, not all the steps were fun. And we'll get into them. First, I created the desert town. I was inspired by a certain film that takes place in a desert to create a scene that took place in a desert. So I fired up Kitbash 3D, got my 3D assets that fit the mood that I was going after, placed them, set up a ground plane, play around with some geometry nodes and this tutorial to make those dirt roads. This is just going to be backdrop, so it's good enough. So I had the idea of a smug, playful guy and then a serious, tough guy that's like big and intimidating. I opened up Character Creator 4 and just moved around with some sliders, created those characters that I had in mind. And at this point it's kind of feeling like I'm playing with toys. And then I wanted to customize my toys a little bit further, so I modeled the helmet and the sword inside Blender. Then to make the characters move, I jumped into the Rococo motion capture suit and acted out the moves. First draft, it was too short, it wasn't moving the way I wanted to, so I didn't like it. Next day I tried again, I wanted to play with the characters a little bit more. And then I played around with a sword for like an hour, okay, not a, not a sword, but this selfie stick. But to me it was a sword and an axe. I played around for like an hour, felt like a kid again, and it was fun. Both characters were me, recorded at separate times. I jumped into the suit again, did a couple of recordings, and then I had the animations. I exported those animations as an FPX, drag and drop it onto my characters, and retargeting of the animation is already done, right? Not quite, because this is what we have now. Yeah, not what I had in mind. Although this project was fun, not all the steps were fun along the way. It's not always is, it, it doesn't have to be. Sometimes we just have to go through the non-fun stuff. We can do a little bit of cleanup in Rococo Studio, but it's never enough. I did my initial cleanup in Blender, because I did not know how great iClone was at motion capture cleanup. Uh, it would have made things a lot easier, but I do know now, so in the next project I'll implement it, I think. I did the facial animations with a plugin inside iClone and using an iPhone. I bring the characters from iClone into Blender using a free add-on. This add-on just imports everything correctly, so all the shaders and their skins and clothes just look correct. Then for the shattering effects, I use this add-on called RBD Lab. I use that for anything that I'm trying to break or shatter, so in the animation the axe getting shattered and the rock exploding is done with that. You can do the same thing using Cell Fracture inside Blender, it's a free add-on that comes with Blender. But I prefer the RBD Lab add-on because it just breaks it into nice steps and it just couple clicks and you have it. I will choose every time that the more efficient option that takes less steps. That's why I made add-ons for myself. I was trying to simplify some of the processes that I do a lot of clicking around and I bring them down to one click. Those are free add-ons I made. You can get them on my Gumroad and I made videos about it if you're interested. For the it. sword and the helmet appearing, I used basically a gradient node and I also made a video about that if you want to check that how, how I set that up. But it's just basically transitioning between that metal and then transparent and then in the middle there's emission with textures. I rendered it for like a couple days, did a lot of little touch-ups here and there, you know, it takes time to make these things. And as a finishing touch, I wanted to do this turntable animation of the characters. And since this whole project just felt like me playing with toys, I wanted to actually turn these characters into toys. It really is fun like that, you can take anything, make them smaller, put some bigger objects around them and then they look like a toy, you can turn anything into anything. And this is an incredible aspect of 3D, that you can steal a part of reality and put them in your world. And that just, you know, I mean it's not steal, it's, it's called scanning. But I, it, I think it sounds a lot cooler when you say, I stole a part of reality and put it in my world. So my point is, I guess 3D is fun, or creating things in general 
it's just fun and sometimes we can forget that. With this project I wanted to capture that feeling I had as a kid playing with toys, just like clashing them together and imagining epic battles in my mind. When we are kids everything is so incredible. As we grow up I feel like we don't daydream as much, do we? Like it could be the it could be us growing up uh, or it could be the distractions are a lot greater now that you know you check your phone every once in a while there is YouTube you shouldn't forget to play every once in a while let go of the distractions go into silence a little bit imagine and daydream and you know clash your toys together and play well who am I to give advice it's just this was just a fun project and I wanted to share my process with you. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll hope I'll see you around soon.